Nation broke a story that changed the game on a topic that remains as hot as ever. We're talking about UFOs. And tonight we've learned that the Pentagon and the agency responsible for identifying those UAPs hosted a UFO briefing with some media outlets. Well, we can't tell you what was said because News Nation was not invited. This all started, you remember, when special correspondent Ross Coltart sat down with whistleblower David Grush. The former intelligence officer made explosive allegations that the government was, has a top secret UFO program that reverse engineers vehicles, aircraft, spacecraft of non-human origin. Well, that exclusive interview led to a hearing on Capitol Hill, where Grush, along with two other whistleblowers, testified in public for the first time. Today, only reporters handpicked by the Pentagon were able to attend the press briefing. News Nation was not handpicked, and our next guest thinks he may know why. Ross Coulthart joins us now. Uh, Ross, I, I wasn't aware the Pentagon got to pick which reporters came into press briefings. Good evening, Elizabeth. Yes, they've pledged openness and transparency to Congress on the subject of UAPs, but they're not following through with their actions. As you know, we've been at the forefront on News Nation of breaking this story wide open, and we're continuing to push on it. But uh, the uh, Pentagon PR woman, a woman called Susan Goff, apparently has been going around corralling select members of the media and inviting them to be the ones who can, um, I forget my phone there, inviting them to be the ones who are speaking publicly on, uh, speaking to the Pentagon on that issue. So unfortunately, we're not invited. We don't know what's transpired. We have no idea what's going to happen in the course of that uh, meeting, but we understand it's happening sometime today. Okay, any guesses on why uh, News Nation wasn't invited since News Nation is the one that broke the story? <laughs> I think it's purely and simply because we're asking the hard questions. Uh, one of the criticisms that I've quite openly made about a lot of the national security reporters that do get invited to these events is they know that if they rattle the cage on this issue and cause too many hard questions to be asked, they don't get invited back to those Pentagon briefings. And so what the Pentagon's trying to do is to control the narrative. They're trying to constrain what people are allowed to know out there in the public. And we we think it's important that the Pentagon follows through with what it's promised Congress, which is openness and transparency. Because only today, Elizabeth, there's been publicity on the Black Vault website mm -hmm. of an incident that Representative Matt Gates talked about last year, where a US military pilot from the Air Force witnessed a craft of some kind hovering over the ocean. And his record of that incident, which Arrow should know about, the Pentagon's UFO office should know know about, the video of that account is actually being suppressed from public knowledge. And one of the questions I would have liked to have asked is, why is that video being suppressed? Good question. All right, Ross Coltart, no doubt you will still figure out a way to find out what happened in that briefing. Really appreciate you being here with us uh, tonight. Only News Nation has covered since the beginning UFOs and what the government actually knows about them. If you remember, let's press the rewind button here. It all started last summer when News Nation special correspondent Ross Coltart interviewed whistleblower David Grush, who claimed there's a U.S. military program designed to recover UFOs. And it was our exclusive reporting that sparked a congressional hearing and created brand new legislation mandating transparency on what the government knows about UFOs. So the the question now is, why wasn't News Nation invited to this week's UFO Pentagon hearing? Here with the exact same question himself as News Nation special correspondent and investigative journalist Ross Coltart. Uh, Ross, it's good to have you this morning. I know you're upset by this. A small handful of reporters were chosen. You were not one of them. And your exclusive was the catalyst for everything. Make it make sense. Look, there's a crucially important report coming up before the uh, Congress, Marky, and it's coming from the Pentagon's UFO Investigation Office. And it's not just us at News Nation. It's a lot of the news media have been excluded from a very select invite-only meeting where certain journalists are being invited to get an embargoed copy of that report so that they can write their stories before the rest of us. And I think this is reprehensible. I think the Pentagon is playing playing favourites, what they're trying to do is control the narrative. They're trying to make sure that 
you, the public, don't get to hear the full story because I can guarantee to you there are questions that we would be asking at News Nation and indeed other news media not invited would be asking that aren't going to be asked because unfortunately the kind of media who are being invited are the fairly tame compliant national security reporters from the major networks who frankly know that if they ask hard questions they don't get invited back. Wow. I, it's Yeah, it's so disappointing. And I also have to add that News Nation reached out to the Department of Defense requesting admittance on behalf of News Nation. We were still denied. Uh, mm. They said, quote, we're looking to keep any media engagement with ARO or AARO's acting director to a small group. But Ross, you know, if their wish was to suppress interest, uh, if, if that was their wish, cherry picking a few reporters only caused more buzz. Look, this is just such a ham-fisted action by the Pentagon, Marky. It's ridiculous because all it's doing is further intensifying public suspicion that the Pentagon, the Department of Defence, the intelligence community have something to hide. And frankly, I know they do. What we know now is incredible, and I'm looking forward to the whistleblowers coming forward eventually and revealing what they know. All the Pentagon is doing is trying to delay the inevitable. Yeah, well, we know that you'll figure it out eventually. Were you able to find out what was discussed during the UFO hearing? No, it's embargoed. We haven't been able to speak to any of the journalists yet who attended, but some of us very some of them very kindly told us that this meeting was happening. Otherwise, we wouldn't have known about it. That's the incredible thing about this is that they tried to keep it all very secret. Well, Ross Coltart, uh, I'm so sorry that happened this week, not only for you, but for the whole network, because we started we started it all thanks to you. Um, it's good to see you. Thanks for hopping on. So in addition to China, Europe is also hopping on this disclosure train. On February 28th, 2024, Skyfire News tweeted, member of the European Parliament speaks on UFOs being addressed by the European Union. Quote, there's growing evidence of understanding that we don't really know some phenomena that happens in our space, in our civil aviation, also in the seas. And that's why I think we should have a very scientific approach to this topic. End quote. Francisco G., member of the European Parliament. Let's hear from Francisco himself in this next clip. I have the pleasure of welcoming today Francisco Guerrero, MEP. Please, Guillaume, begin the interview. Yeah, uh, nice to meet you, Mr. Guerrero. Thank you for being here. Uh, and thank you for asking your question to the European Parliament. Of course, you appeared uh, in the, so to speak, the UAP scene. Uh, I'm sure many people have, in America in particular, have uh, discovered the existence of the European Parliament thanks to your intervention. So just for that, thank you very much. Um, and so I want to start with this first question. Um, a lot of us have grown um, have grown up with the idea that UFOs were essentially a Hollywood creation. Um, so what made you realize that UAP were not visionary or fictitious? Well, first of all, thank you for, for having me. Uh, just to let the, our listeners from the US uh, know that we are not a federation, so we are a group of countries that work together with several European institutions and I represent the European Parliament. So it's a parliament that is elected by the member states to represent European values and uh, some group political ideas. Um, and um, well, uh, I would not jump into any conclusions for what these uh, UAPs may be. I would just say that there's a growing evidence of um, understanding that we don't really know uh, some phenomena that happened, uh, that happened in, the, in our space, uh, in our uh, civil aviation and also in the seas uh, and that's why I think we should have like a very scientific approach on this topic um, so also not entering the, the noise that sometimes happen with this kind of, of topic so my approach and I think the approach from everyone that is serious about this issue is that understanding there's something that exists that was also now reported by uh, official institutions namely in the US that clearly um, stated with with some tape recordings and with some with some video footage that there's some kind of U, uh, UAPs that's happened and we don't really uh, understand the full length of the phenomena and so that's why we should have more scientific evaluation a, a better a scrutiny of what's happening so then we can step by step 
understand the, the, the circumstances that this uh, phenomena happen and then uh, try to draw a line from, from a possible conclusion or possible several conclusions. And I think that's the most scientific approach that we can have. Very cool to see all of these different countries coming together to have serious talks about UAPs and UFOs. It's not a joke, you guys. It's really not. And Canada did not want to be left out, so they had something to say about UAPs also. A CTV News article called Canadian Government's Top Science Advisor Provides Update on Official UFO Study reads, The Canadian Government's Top Scientific Advisor says her office will release a public UFO report by early fall. Speaking to lawmakers in Ottawa this week, Mona Nemmer also said that there can be more done to make UFO information available to Canadians. Quote, I think that there is room for improvement in terms of the gathering, reporting on the information, and also making it available to researchers and to the public, end quote, Nemmer told Parliament's Science and Research Committee on Tuesday. Quote, I can appreciate that some you know may be of national security concern, but I believe that by and large that you can make the information public. And I think that's the best way to mitigate conspiracy theories and disinformation, end quote. As Chief Science Advisor of Canada, Nemmer heads an arm's length office that reports directly to Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and the Minister of Innovation, Science and Industry. In March 2023, ctvnews.ca revealed the existence of the office's Sky Canada project, which is the first known official Canadian UFO study in nearly 30 years. Quote, we should be on track for releasing the report at the end of the summer, early fall, end quote, Nemmer said on Tuesday. Quote, I think our report is going to be quite fascinating on the historic front, so stay tuned, end quote. 